Again, my name is Amy Nichols, Campus Coordinator for the Campus for Creative Aging. Welcome to Excel One Day One. We're happy you're here. The note about Zoom bombing is this, if that happens and we get Zoom bombed, your session will end immediately. I will redo a different link and send it to you. We are very, very protective of our um, Zoom links. So we have not, knock on wood, had that happen to us yet. Um, and that's why we are protective. We try to make sure we run a, a, a good tight ship with our links. Um, today's session is recorded. You may leave your camera off if you don't want to be on camera, but we would really love to see your smiling faces at some point too. All right, let me go to my next screen. So a little bit about us. The Campus for Creative Aging is located in St. Joseph, Michigan. I don't know where everybody else is, but I know there's at least one, one person from Southwest Michigan on here. Um, and it is located directly next to the Region 4 Area Agency on Aging, who is our, our for lack of a better word, our, our bosses. Um, and we were very excited about the campus. It's a beautiful place, but it is now closed. Um, if you want to know what it looks like, Martin's screen, um, his virtual uh, background, is the front of the campus for Creative Aging. Um, we miss it terribly, but we have had to pivot a little bit like the rest of the world, and here we are teaching computers on computers. So pivoting is a good thing. Um, if you have interest in any of our other classes, you may certainly um, go ahead and find them on our Facebook page, the Campus for Creative Aging. We are on Twitter at the Campus for Creative Aging. And guess what? Our website is campusforcreativeaging.org. Um, Martin is going to be, Martin Dixon is our, our illustrious instructor for the day. And this class is a little bit unique other than from others that we teach in that we have coaches at the ready for you. Should you have any issues, um, Charlie Olszewski, Ren Baldwin, and I see Dennis Bowen is coming in. So um, these gentlemen are here to give you one-on-one -on -one support for if you have any issues. What we're gonna have you do is if you're having issues, please find the chat box at the bottom of the screen, open it up, send me a message. I'm gonna send you all a message right now so you know what it looks like. And um, that's where you'll send me a message. When we find that you need an issue or you have an issue or you just have, you know, need a little clarification on something, I will send you and one of these lovely coaches to a private Zoom for a couple of minutes to figure out what's going on. And when you're done with that, you will just leave it and come back. If you've missed anything, we'll be happy to try and catch you up. Um, so please, please make use of these lovely gentlemen and all of their expertise. They are here for you. All right. Any other things that I've forgotten? Private coach Marty, I think we're good to go. And you know what that means is that I'm going to stop sharing my screen and uh, Martin is going to start sharing his screen and he's gonna start teaching and I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy. Um, we will have some fun games for you by the way today and a couple of poll questions. So whenever you're ready, I will be happy to help you with those as well. Well, good morning, everybody. My name's Martin Dixon. Today we're going to be talking about, if I can advance the slide, this course originally was written in six lessons. In the, these three days we're going to talk about learning the basic features and organizing and formatting the worksheet. Typically this class is a 12-hour class and we present each one of the lessons in one day. So we'll end up working on these two, first two lessons, day one, day two, and day three. And what I'd like to talk to talk to you today about, I want us to talk about what are the concepts of a spreadsheet. Some people have different opinions and different ideas what a spreadsheet really is. So I want to try and clarify that to start off with. Then we're going to look at taking a look at the uh, Microsoft Excel program. It's um, basically you can go to your start screen and scroll down till you get to Excel. I also want to show you how to add a link both to your desktop and to your uh, taskbar. Then we'll get into the components of a spreadsheet. When you first start looking at Excel, it looks pretty straightforward, but I've got a diagram that was, you know, developed by Charlie, which I really appreciate, that gets into, you know, all the bits and pieces of a spreadsheet. Then we're going to talk about selecting cells. You can select an individual cell, a group of cells, a column, a row, or the entire spreadsheet if you want. From there, we're gonna go into 
entering text, numbers, and formulas into a cell. Every cell can either have text, numbers, or formulas. You know, one of the three. Then, then we're going to get into being able to copy cell, uh, formulas from one cell to another. And then we're going to talk about automatically entering sequences of numbers. Here again, this is a, a feature of Excel that, you know, can save you a lot of time and effort. So from there, I would, you know, if Amy could, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, stop sharing. If Amy could put up her first poll question regarding what is a spreadsheet, I'd appreciate. All righty. So on one second here, are you going to hold that up for me, friend? I can. I, I certainly can. Okay. So if you are looking at what my, my friend is showing here, okay, well, now it just disappeared on us. That's there interesting. You go. Yeah, there you go. So this is like, this is from his mom. And the question is this, do you think that's a spreadsheet? His mom was an accountant and did these kind of things. Um, your virtual background makes it kind of disappear, but at least we can see it a little bit now. So when we do these polls, you have to um, click on your answer and click submit. If you don't hit submit, it's not going to register your vote. These are completely anonymous. So we are now not going to judge you if you get this question wrong. All right, so is was that image a, sweat, a spreadsheet? Looks like we've got six out of seven voted. All righty. And we are good. All right, so I'm ending the polling and I'm sharing the results. So um, there are a couple that are not sure or don't think that really was a spreadsheet. What do you, what do you, what is the correct answer on this one there, my friend Martin? Okay, I'd like to clarify that a little bit. Basically, what we're talking about here, that is a paper spreadsheet. Everything's developed in Excel. You can relate back to the paper spreadsheet. Here again, this was done before computers were around. So here, Excel has been developed basically, you know, to work just like the paper one. It's kind of a trick question, but I, I wanted to um, just, you know, give you a flavor for what it was. Okay, now we talked about what a spreadsheet is. And here again, you can think of a spreadsheet as a combination of columns and rows. And every time you have an intersection of a column and row, that becomes a cell. We define a cell address which you can actually define, you start out with the column number, let's say column C, and then we go down to the row, say number five. So a cell C5 would be in column C, row five. And that's how we Marty, identify. Marty, are you, are you thinking you're sharing your screen because it's not? Nope. Okay, thanks, sorry. I couldn't get back to that. For some reason, I'm... I'm I am stuck on a, there we go. I think I'm back. Maybe. We see you. We don't see your screen, Marty. Okay. How about if I share what I, what I have here, if I open okay. it? And you can at least, you can play with it then. I know that, okay? So, sounds good. And by the way, this is the first time we have taught this class, so a little grace would be appreciated <laughs> while we figure out what we're doing. All right, what we have here is a is a spreadsheet. Unfortunately, it does not have the ribbon. And I'm not sure I can control this with Amy. Okay. What I'd really like to do is kind of talk about how to start the... There we go. You know, there, oh, oh, beautiful. Oh, okay, there you go. And if you could zoom that up to 400%, it would help too. There we go. Hopefully everybody can see that a whole lot better. So let's kind of start out with what are the components of a spreadsheet? As I mentioned, for example, if we look at yeah, Jan the January electricity, that is in cell C7. So, you know, we can go to rows, column C, row seven. And if you notice, as I, I scroll around, the 
and I'm a specific cell, you can actually see highlighted like C7. If I go to cell C8, it'll, it'll go down there. One of the things that we sent you in the package were three appendices. And with those three appendices, appendix one happened to be um, a, a diagram that shows all the components of a spreadsheet. So Amy, if you could stop sharing your screen, I'm gonna to try to start sharing mine. Okay. And what I'm looking at, this one right here. As you can see, this is somewhat busy, but I want to kind of go in through the pieces and parts. I'm going to go from the top to the bottom, and on the one that you are looking at, it might be a little clear. First thing I want to talk about is the title bar. It's on the very top row, right in the center. When you first open Excel, you're going to see book one in Excel. So you can kind of see in this title bar, where it's pointing right here in the middle where that's at. Another thing that we have up on the top row over on the left-hand side is the quick access toolbar. These, you know, this can be modified. We can actually add any, you know, any tool within Excel to this um, toolbar. It comes standard with a um, back button, a forward button, and a, sh and a save. But that you can keep those if you want them if you don't, if you, or if you don't want them. The next thing we come to over on the right hand side is our standard Windows uh, components. We got the minimize, which is the little minus button. The maximize, when you're maximize, it's a one square. When you're in restore down, that's actually like a double square. And then we can close the program with the X. One thing that I want to point out, what Amy did a minute ago, was this ribbon display options right next to the minus sign. That is where you can turn on and turn off the ribbon. And if your ribbon is not on, I highly recommend that you leave it on. Otherwise, you're going to lose most of your controls. Now we want to talk about the ribbon. And the ribbon, see if I can, yeah, basically the ribbon starts below where it says file and you see all these little icons within the ribbon. The ribbon has several different tabs. The one you'll use most of the time is the home tab. If, if you start going across you can start seeing you have insert, page layout, formulas, data, review, view, and help. Every time you click on a different tab, you're going to get a completely different ribbon. And on the commands that you use are basically grouped into one of these seven tabs. We get and we have what we call groups. And I, you know, one of the things that we have in the in the black square is the alignment group. If you go across the bottom, you have the clipboard, the font, the alignment, number styles, cells, and editing. If we go to a different tab, we're going to get a whole set of, you know, different set of groups. And inside the groups, I'm just going to talk about the alignment right now because it's what I'm looking at. With the alignment, you can see there's several different um, little icons there. And one of the things that Microsoft has done is to try to put as many icons as possible within a group. And a lot of people, and I don't you know, recognize all the little symbols all the time, one handy little trick you can do is take your mouse and just hover over a given icon, and you should get the words that come up and tell you what, exactly what it is. There's another little thing in some of the groups down here in the very bottom right-hand corner. There's what we call the dialog box. It's, it's pretty small, and you have to kind of look for it. But this will give you additional commands that are not a part of that you know, grouping itself. After we get done with the, with the ribbon, then I want to come down to the, you know, the next column. The first thing we have is the name box. As I mentioned before, every cell, you can go to the you know, column, letter, and the row number, and that identifies exactly what cell you're in. If we slide across a little bit, 
we've got the formula bar, you got that FX, and then you got a white space. Everything that you type into a given cell will show up in that formula bar. You can both edit it in the cell and you can edit it on the formula bar. That little FX symbol, that is a function symbol where you can actually access some of the functions within Excel. Then we're starting to get down into the, this is the Excel command structure for the workbook. And then we get into the worksheet. And before I go on to talk about the worksheet, let me explain the difference between a workbook and a worksheet. It, a lot of people use the term worksheet for anything in Excel. A workbook is a file. And for example, ours, when we first started out, is book one Excel. I say always go up to that title and you know you can know what, what file you're in. This the whole thing is a workbook. The worksheet is the actual data within the workbook for this book one. So within the sheet, you have say have a, a row of columns, and we actually for your information, there are 16,384 columns, and there's a million 48,576 rows. So if anybody thinks they can fill Excel up in a few days, more power to you. It actually works out to about a little over 17 billion cells. So I don't think we're ever going to run out. In this example, we have cell J5. It's got the word Charlie in it. Here again, this, this, when Charlie wrote his name in there, that's an example of putting text into a cell. You could have also typed a number, and we'll get into actually showing uh, formulas a little bit later. Then we're going to go down here to the bottom of the spreadsheet. Over on the right-hand side, you have sheet one. You know, here again, you can add, we're going to talk about later sessions, how to add sheets. But here again, we're in sheet one, so it, we, Excel actually allows you to have many worksheets within a given workbook. So here again, this one we happen to be in book one, sheet one. So you can kind of always know where you're at. Then we go across to, to the right-hand side. We have a horizontal scroll bar which allows you to you know, scroll back and forth amongst the columns. And then over on the very side, we have a vertical scroll bar. It allows you to scroll up and down. Then we go to the very bottom of the uh, workbook. We have different views. We have a normal view, a page layout view, and a page break view. During this class, we'll almost exclusively be in the normal view. And then one of the other pieces over here, the zoom slider, one of the things that when Amy made that, you know, less than one part A, when she made, went up to about 400%, she just took the slider bar and slid it over. We're trying to do that so you'll be able to see the screen a little bit better. See, it looks, it looks very complicated and very busy, but there's just a whole lot of things going on. And I hope you can take this and say it is attachment um, A to your, you know, to the lesson. I've also included attachment B, which is a common set of uh, acronyms and definitions. I want to try to use Excel's language throughout this course so that we're all talking apples and apples together. And then I, let me get out of here. I'm going to stop sharing. Oh, yeah. Nope, that's not the right one. I'm just glad I got something right, Marty. Yeah. You did. You did great. As, as I mentioned, Appendix B is a glossary of terms. Here again, just so we talk about apples and apples together. And. I don't know if you're seeing this or not, but Appendix C is a group of commands that 
talk about everything you can do within Excel. Not seeing it, Marty. Not seeing it. Okay. Somebody got to get back to Zoom. Okay. Okay. Now. Now we're talking. Okay. This is Appendix B. It just gives you the you know a list of definitions. And then I'm going to go to Appendix C. Uh, where is it? Lost Appendix C. Want me to share it? Sure, if you got it. Okay. Yeah, which one is it? <laughs> I think it's that one. No, that's B. We're looking. We're looking for C. Yeah. Got too many things open. That's with me. I've totally lost uh, all my picture on Zoom. There. Okay. Um, I have it. If you would like me to do it. That would be good because I've completely lost. We're not seeing it. We see appendix. Appendix. C. There we go. There's there's Appendix C. <clears throat> what we have here is, I've got it back now, thank goodness, is we, I start out with the keyboard characters and I get into some of the other you know, commands. One, if I just press the alone, I would just strictly get the letter A. And if you notice that Excel uses a convention, I'll be talking about this throughout the class, shift and plus. So if I went, you know, held down the shift key, plus I pressed the letter A, I wouldn't get anything there. But if I did the control plus, that would select the entire worksheet. And I've tried to add in the commands throughout. There are several pages of these commands that, you know, sh you know should, you know, help you understand where we're at. So some people like keyboards better than they do mice. So this is the way we originally he had everything working within Excel. Okay, so next, somebody else can share. Okay, I'm gonna share. Uh, get the right one. Go back to our wonderful spreadsheet. You should be able to see the ribbon. And I've tried to expand this, or Amy actually did, where, where it's a lot bigger. So we can see where we're at. One of the things we can do, if you want to select a cell, you just strictly go to that cell and, and click on it. Unfortunately, when I click on it, okay, I, if you can see, there should be a green little box around cell C7. And if you notice, C is highlighted and seven is highlighted. It helps you visualize where you're at. If I select another cell, let's say cell D9, it's just a matter of using your mouse and clicking and you can actually select cells or select a cell. If you want to select a group of cells, you, you select the first one. You know, so I'm holding my mouse down and I'm going to drag it. So I selected six cells. I've gone from C7 to D9. And this is basically like I, I click my mouse, held it down, and drug it down to D9. And you notice that C7 is white but cells the other five cells are highlighted in, in, in are dark that's just a feature of excel the first one always stays white and if you also notice up in the columns columns c and d are highlighted and rows seven eight and nine are highlighted so that's a way to select a group of cells i'm going to go out if i'd like to select a complete column. I go up in the column heading here again where the letters are and you notice that, you know, the down arrow, if I click on that, I will have selected all a million, no excuse me, yeah all a million forty eight thousand rows that go down in column C. If I wanted to select a row, I go over here in the row and you notice I have the arrow pointing to the side. If I went row seven, I selected every column now in, in row seven. This comes in real handy when we're starting to talk about 
formatting the cells for whether they're text numbers or formulas. And a lot of things you can do in Excel, you, you can do a lot of things at the same time. If I select a column, I'm going to select column C as in Charlie. If I hold down my control button, I can actually select individual um, columns. So I could actually do some formatting all of these columns at once by holding down the, the column and this selecting the, you know, the column heading that I want to do. If you want to turn off the selection, just click in any cell and it turns it off. This works exactly the same way for rows as it does for columns. Let's say if I take, for example, row six, select that row. If I now hold down my shift key and click on, you know, go down to row 10, I've selected everything between row six and row 10. So using this control and shift functions allows you to select multiple rows or columns. Here's one more feature for selecting cells that I want to talk about. That if you go up to the little um, triangle between cell A and row, row, excuse me, column A and row one, there's a little triangle. If I click on that, I have selected all 17 billion cells within Excel. So I can, I can do some, you know, some mass formatting. For example, right now, this happens to be a Times New Roman. If I want to change the font, to say, uh, uh, I can pick one. I'm going to go to Arial. Makes a little different font. I want to change the size. I can change it to 20. Now I've, now I've got a really huge. I can take my zoom bar and bring it down. So that's, that's selecting cells. Now let me, um, I'm going to go back and change that back to Times New Roman. And back to size 12. That's just one example when you have something selected that you can change something. And here again, the concept with Excel, anytime you want to make a change or do something, the first thing you do is select a cell say for example, cell C7, and then you go do something to it. For example, change the format. When I had all the cells selected, I changed everything within Excel. So I could, you know, I could do one, I could do a, a several cells, I could do columns, I could do rows, or the entire sheet. So let's get in and talk about editing and starting to enter text, numbers, and formulas. We see in this example for lesson one, part A, I've got some monthly expenses, electricity, water, and gas for January and February. We have just happen to have a blank column over here. I go to cell E6, and let's type in the word March, M-A-R. So we have an idea this is the expenses for March. Let me, I need to advance another computer. So with March, I am going to add in the values you know, for that. Let me get to my, here, here we go. If I go into cell, oh, I went to E6 and type March. If you notice when I hit the enter, it advanced the cell down to, um, cell E7. So I'd like for you to type in 70 in cell E7 and press enter. And then that goes down to cell E8. Type in 35 and enter. And then type in 90 and enter. Whoop, I hit 89. Excuse me, I can't type. So, so far now, You've added text by typing in in March, and you've added in the three values in here. 
We're not putting dollar signs in this. We're just making it real simple so we can see it. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to show you four different methods for entering a formula. So I'm going to go to cell C10. And when I select cell C10, I can see I get that little green box around it. And then I'm going to start with a formula. Anytime you have a formula, it always starts with the equal sign. So I'm going to type in equal. And then I'm going to select, I'm going to type in the cell names. I'm going to go C7. We're not seeing your formula bar, Marty. Okay, that's what I'm afraid of. And I don't know how to make it work. But um, in, I think make, make your spreadsheet larger, increase the... Okay. You might go down to 100% instead of That's 300%. interesting because I'm, I'm at 200. Are you really? Well, go, go up to about four. That, there you go. Now try, oops, that's a little too much. That's okay. Where'd it go? Wow. Need to get over to ABC. You're showing H on gotcha. There you go. There we go. All right. Now try. Okay. Ah, shoot. That format bar is still awful small. Yeah. If you look up in the formula bar, I should have equals C7. Can everybody see that? I, and it's also down in cell C7. Or yeah, C10. It, that format bar is really hard to see you, where it is. Can you actually see cell C10? Is yes. it bigger? Oops, we can see the C7, equal C7 in C, in the yeah. cell, but the, um, the bars are really small at the top. Okay. You can well, see a cursor flashing and that's it. I think I can, I can show everything within the cell. So I go cell C7, then I'm gonna hold down my shift button and add the plus sign. Then I'm gonna go to C8. So, so far, right, I'm adding C7 plus C8, another plus, and I'm gonna C9. When I hit the enter button, I'll get the value, 195. And with that value, if I click back in that cell, I know it's hard to see the formula bar, but you should see the formula up in the, up in the uh, formula bar. So that's one method for doing math. And before I go any further, let me explain something about how Excel does math. First thing it does, we have the plus and minus symbols that we're used to using. Here again, just the plus is up on the, on the um, above the, on the keyboard, minus is right next to it. When you get into multiplication, Excel does not use X. If you typed in X, it's gonna think it's the letter X. So what we have here is we use the shift button and the number eight is the asterisk. So anytime you wanna multiply, you use the asterisk. And then we wanna divide, we use the forward slash button. If we were gonna do exponents, say two squared, we would actually hold down the shift button and press the six key for that little carrot that goes up. So that's, that's how Excel does math. I'm gonna start off with just doing some addition here to show the different ways to create a formula. So now I'd like to go to cell D10 and I wanna show you method number two. We'll start out with the equal sign here, just like we did before. Every formula starts with an equal sign. This time I just gonna click on the cell that I'm interested. So D7, you notice it puts D7 in there. Hit the plus button, click on cell D8. And if you notice as I'm clicking on this, the D7 was in blue and the D8 is in red. And this, this helps you visualize what we go. With. And if I click plus D9, I should have Equal formula equals D7 plus D8 plus D9. It's the same formulas we had for the January totals, but we just did this by clicking the cells. So I'm gonna hit enter, and now I get 183. 
or somebody gets some different numbers, you know, feel free to um, send Amy an e a, a chat and we'll, we'll see where we're at. The next method I want to use is I'm going to go to cell E10. I want to get the totals for March. And with E10, I'm going to go up here to the FX symbol that's right next door, next to the formula bar. I select that. And what I'm, what I'm getting here is a, a group of things. I was working on some trigonometry the other day, so it says degrees on mine. I'm going to select the sum and say OK. Click OK. If you notice down here, and it didn't show everything, but it showed the formula says equals sum and parenthesis E7 colon E9. That is one of Excel's shortcuts that says it's going everything between cell C, C7, E7 and E9, can't speak. And if also if you notice that little box, you can actually see the numbers up there right next to the, to the formula. If, if, that, if that's good and you think that's acceptable, say okay, and you're gonna get back to 195. You can do the same thing in Excel going across a row as you did in the column. So this time, I'm going to go to cell F7. When I go to cell F7, I'm going to, from here, I want to go up to the ribbon. And I'm, and I'm going to go to the editing group. It's on the right-hand side. And there's one called Auto Sum. Click on Auto Sum. And you should see it says equals sum of C7 to E7 in parenthesis. If that's what you if that's what you get, go ahead and press enter. Let me add one thing on to the way that Excel does math. It would typically do exponents, then division, then multiplication, and then addition and subtraction. If you want to change the order, say you want to um, add several numbers together. Let me go over here and add a formula. If I go to equals, and if I put the parenthesis in, say C7 plus D7 plus, whoop, gotta be able to type, plus E7. And I put those in parenthesis, and I wanted to get the average of those. I would divide by three, which is a forward slash, divide by three, and I get a 61.667. But the, you know, here, by doing, putting those parenthesis around, it allows me to add those numbers first and then divide by three. If I didn't have the parenthesis, it would take cell C, E7, divide it by 3, and add it to cell C7 and D7. So you'd probably not, you'd not get an average. You get something a little bit different. I highly encourage you, any time that you're working with a formula, to take it once you put your formula and got an answer, go up to your formula bar and make sure it's, re, it's telling you what you, you, know, you think you're supposed to get. All right. Any, any, I should say any questions. I'm used to teaching this live, so I'm not used to um, not, not being no able to talk to people. No questions in the chat box so far, Charlie, or Marty, sorry. <laughs> not a problem. One thing I didn't talk to you about earlier was, let's say we'd like to add the Excel icon either to our desktop or to our uh, taskbar. To do that, I'm not sure if it's going to display or not. If I go down and left click on the start button, then I, you know, I should have an alphabetical listing of all of my uh, applications within Excel. And I come down to the E for Excel. Then we right click 
on the Excel icon. And I, I can click on, you know, if I go to more, I just hover on it. I can, you know, I, I got one where I can unpin it from the taskbar. And I've already got mine pinned. So I'm going to unpin it, and then go back and right click and go to more. And now it says pin to taskbar. So if, on yours, you click on pin to taskbar. And you should have that icon show up now on your, on your taskbar. It's easier than having to go through the Excel or through the start screen. One other method, if you want to put it on your desktop, this is all in the lesson plan, so don't, don't worry if, I, if you don't write everything down. I, if I go back and right click on the Excel icon, you hover on more, then we go left click on the open file location, one of those three options. Then you'll get a whole list of programs and you notice Excel is highlighted. Go right click on that again. And then we're going to go to send to, just hover over send to. And we got about six options. The third one down is your desktop to create a shortcut. So that way you've actually put those, those shortcuts, you know, on your um, computer so you have them easy to use. You can open up Excel directly from those. Hey, Marty, um, that is actually not showing on your screen when you're doing that. I'm not surprised. For some reason. So, but um, the lesson file does have step-to-step -step instructions with pictures. Yes. In, in fact, that's uh, in, in your lesson plan. That should be about pages, oh, I don't know. Three or four. I'm, I haven't gotten back that far, but it's, it's early, very early in the lesson plan. Great, thank you. So I'm going to go back to the one we had, just to, so you can actually see a spreadsheet. Marty, I have a question there. Yes, sir. <laughs> <clears throat> when you um, when you clicked on cell uh, F7, F7, yes, and then click the auto sum from up in the ribbon, right? How did it know what it was sum uh, what it was adding? Excel ha has a system called reference cell addressing, where it actually looks to something that is next to it or up and down from it. And, it, and basically Excel guesses at what, you know, at what you're going to do. If I go to the auto sum, it guesses when I went down to cell F8 that I want to C8 to, to E8. I always recommend anytime Excel tries to guess something, verify what it is to be sure what you have. Sometimes it guesses wrong. Why when, didn't it include um, <clears throat> B8? Didn't include B8 because it wasn't a number. Thank you. I'm sure I'm gonna... Okay. What I'd like to do now is save the spreadsheet. So I'm gonna to go to the file and I'd like for you to go to save as. The reason I want you to go to save as is I want you to keep the original what we had lesson one part A. And I'm just gonna go into a folder in my computer for documents. I'm not sure where you have yours stored. But when I pull that up in the file name, I see lesson one part A. If I, if I saved it right now, it would save it right over the top of what we started with. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to left click in front of the Elm lesson. I'm going to type in the word my. So now it says my lesson one part A. Now left click on save. And if you look at, you know, unfortunately I can't see the top of my screen, but you should see my lesson one part A. That way you have both what you started with, lesson one part A, and my lesson one part A as the um, two pieces of that. Does everybody get that? I trust you did. 
Otherwise, send Amy an email and somebody will help, help you get there. Just send me something in the chat box and we will uh, send you out with private tutoring if need be. Okay, now we've actually entered text. We en entered in March. We entered, no in entered numbers, electricity, water, and gas. We created formulas, four different ways to add the sum of these. Now what I'd like to do is I'm going to close this one. I'm going to go file and close. And I'm going to go back to another share screen. I'm going to ask you to open up lesson one, part B as in boy. Should look pretty similar except we did add the 93 in here. If everybody's got that open now, I'd like for you to select cell F8, which is the 93. And if you can see in your formula bar, it equals the sum of C8 to E8. That colon means it goes everything from C to E. What I'd like to do now is show you how to copy a formula. I could put these formulas in one by one, but there's an easier way to do that is to copy the formula. So I'm going to select cell F8, select the cell. Now I want to go up to the ribbon in the clipboard group and select copy. When I select copy, you should see a little marquee going around cell F8. That is, that is telling us that Excel understands that that is, you know, copy. If I go down to cell F9 and go back up to the clipboard and click on paste, I will have copied that formula. And if you check, if you select cell F, um, F9, you're going to see it equals the sum C7, C9 to E9. So we've actually copied the formula. using the copy function. Here again, that might be a little easier and have to type that formula out every time. For the sake of this class, I'm gonna go back and select cell F9 and press the delete button. I know you did a lot of hard work there, but I've got a reason. I can also, I don't have to copy just one at a time. I can actually copy multiple ones. So if I go back, select cell F8, left click on copy, I get that good old marquee back again. Now if I select F9 and F10 and click on paste, left click on paste, I, I select both of those. So now I've actually copied formula down to F, F9 and F10. But just, just for this class, because I want to show you something else, I want to select both F9 and F10, delete those. Now I want to show you another little function. This is one of the most powerful tools Excel has to offer. If you see, if you're in cell F8, you should have a green box around it. If you go down in the very bottom, right hand corner, there's a little tiny box there. And if you hover your mouse over that box, you'll eventually see a black cross. If you see, see one with arrows, that just moves things. But if you have a, a plain black cross, if you'll select, whoop, I gotta get back to it. Click on your mouse, drag this down to the next two cells. You can drag it as many times as you want. And that's, that is called the fill handle. And we've actually used the fill handle to copy formulas using the fill handle. Some people call this the amazing fill handle. All right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now so I can switch to something else. Yeah. Would this be a good time to launch a poll, you think? That'd be a great time, yeah. I forgot right. there was some polls we wanted to do. 
Uh, all right, I'm going to launch this poll because it, it, it does um, pertain to exactly what we've been talking about. So what is your expertise using Microsoft Excel program? Um, I have never used it. I have some expertise but need a refresher. I am comfortable with using Excel. So just kind of tell us how you feel about your, your comfort level in Excel and click your answer. And don't forget to click submit because that is very important. And I assume if you know about the, um, the, um, the magical uh, tool that uh, Marty was just talking about, you might have some experience with Excel. Okay, so it looks like we have um, uh, a few people who have never used Excel, some that have some expertise but are here for a refresher, and one who's pretty comfortable. So that's where your results are, Marty. I think that, this that, is that sounds great because for, for this class, I'm focusing it primarily on the beginner because I want to get the fundamentals of Excel down before we go any deeper. So that, that's, that's good to know where everybody's at. You might as well answer the next poll question too, since All you're right. so good at this. All righty. So the next poll question, um, I do, please remind me that I have a personal poll question at the end um, um, for housekeeping. Um, this next one is, if you know, what version of Microsoft Excel do you have on your computer? Excel 2016 or 19? Excel 2010 or 2013? Some kind of previous version of Excel? Or I don't know. And I would have to say that my answer to this one would be, I don't know, Marty. <laughs> I have no idea. It's just whatever they gave me. <laughs> oh. All right, we've got a few people voting. We've got a couple more, a couple more coming. All right, now we're going to end. So looks like you're, some people know, good for you guys, because you're a step ahead of me. Um, 2016 um, or 2019, uh, 2010 or 2013. And hey, there's some couple friends that are there with me in the I don't know department. So <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's great, because when you launch Excel, you'll see a little green box and it should say Excel, whatever number it is. That number refers to the year that was released. If also, you if you, also, if you go under info, um, you can actually gain that information from Excel. Show that, I think, if you wanna see that. Thank you, Charlie. <clears throat> so when you click at the top, left hand corner of Excel, um, you'll get something that opens up and there's something called info and this will tell you exactly all about the Excel version that you're using and where you're saving the files and the whole nine yards. That's all there. Another one is if you go to more and you go to account, there's your office. I've got office 2019. Good, Good for you, Charlie. So those are coming from, just click this file button, uh -huh. go to info, or go to more, an account, and you get that information. That is life changing, thank you. Mm -hmm. hey, for the purpose of this class, everything I'm presenting on this computer is in 2016. If you have anything from 2010 up to 2019, the ribbon will look almost identical. They keep adding a few features back and forth, but for this class, you'll probably not see any difference in it. But if you're prior to 2010, then you're gonna be looking at a group of menus as opposed to all those icons on the ribbon. The ribbon was a, came about in Excel 2010. Alrighty, I am gonna go back to the spreadsheet I was in. Uh, where am I at? No. Yeah. I think that's the one. Nope, that's not the one. You could click on part B if you wanted to and it will open it again, maybe. Okay. If Excel will let you have it open. Because I did a little something different and I'm still in lesson one part B and what I did was I came down here and left clicked on sheet two. 
So I should have a completely blank screen. Here again, sheet one had the, you know, had our example of what we, we worked on. And sheet two has this. I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger to so help you see it. I want to show you some of the features and some of the things that you can, you know, that you can use using the fill handle. I'd like for you to type in the number one in cell A1. Press the enter and press two and enter. So we've entered two numbers. Now what I'd like for you to do is select cells A1 and cells A2. So left click on cell A1 and drag it down to cell A2. You should see both of those selected. Now go back to your fill handle. I want you to drag it down. You can go as far down as you want. And I would say, tell me what you have, but I can't hear most of you. What we should have gotten was a you know, sequence of numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you were doing like a calendar, or if you were doing a, a list of numbers, you want them in a specific column or a row, this would be a lot easier to do than actually type each one individually. I'd like to show you another way how this works. I'm going to go to cell C1, type in the number one, press enter, and press the number three and enter. So now I've got cells one and three. So we'll select both of those cells, get my fill handle open, and then drag it down. What do we have here? Now we've got a set of odd numbers. And the way that, the, that actually the fill handle works, it looks at the difference between the two numbers we put in. Is you know, difference between one and three is two, so it keeps adding two on to each one of them. That, and that allows you, to, you know, to do a set of odd numbers. I could have put a two and a four in there and done a set of even numbers. If I do a single number, let's say 20, whoop, 2020 is such a special year. I use the fill handle here. If I can get, there it is. Drag it down. If I just use a single number or a single word, I'm just going to copy it. So if you're going to be repeating something, you can use the fill handle to do that. Now let's go to cell G1. I'm just going to type in January, just J-A-N, and press enter. Oops, press enter. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this time instead of going down the, down the uh, column, I'm going to go across row one. So go down and select your fill handle. Now drag this across. What you have here, Excel recognize January actually as a number. It's a formatted number that comes up and that's why it goes January, February, March. So if you, for example, you were doing a calendar, you could do this and create your calendar without having to do, you know, type it in once. Okay, there's one thing that I don't have in your lesson that I I think it's kind of a fun little exercise, is I'm going to introduce you to a little bit of Italian. So I'm going to go to cell G3, type in the number one, press enter, and cell G4, I'm going to enter, enter two. I'm going to create a formula equals G3 plus G4. Simple little formula, and it's pretty tricky math there that one plus two is equal to three. If I use my fill handle here, if I can get to my fill, here it is. Select this down, go as far down as I want. My numbers get very big very quickly. This is a number sequence that was developed by 
Leonardo Fibonacci back in the 1500s. This is called the Fibonacci sequence. And if you think about leaves on flowers and some of the geometric patterns in nature, it follows this Fibonacci number. That's just, you know, just a little, little trivia there for you to, you know, give you an idea of what, you know, what Fibonacci is all about. But I wanted to show you that you can do a, you know, you can do a single, you can do months, you can do anything you want. If I wanted to say I wanted to look at 20, whoops, 30, can't, can't type. 2010, oh boy, I want to get an A for typing today. Where's my two at? You did teach us Italian though, so your A, yeah. you know, you're going to get to keep that A, don't you worry. Yeah, not a problem. Go 2010, 2011. We don't have to start with the one or two. We select both of those. And I'm going to sequence this to the, to the right. I'm just going to increase my number. I, I started 2010, so if you had different years, you could know, you put that in. So it just kind of gives you an idea of some of the powers of the fill handle. And we're going to be using the fill handle through the remainder of the class. But I want to you know, introduce this to you early. And some people actually call this the amazing fill handle. So. I'm hoping that this gives you a perspective of some of the things you can do within Excel. One of the things that I didn't mention to you in the very beginning of the class, what are some of the things that you can actually do with Excel? When we start thinking about some of those. Um, you could certainly Add in investments. You could, you know, you could, you know, you could, you know, change stocks. You could um, use it as an address book. You're not limited to using numbers within Excel. You can use, you know, do an address book, and potentially in the second part of this course, we'll actually use an address book, you know, to actually see, you know, see how that works with names as opposed to numbers. But there's a lot of financial things you can do. I was actually doing the other, used it the other day. I had a trigonometry question where I needed to find the um, hypotenuse of two um, of a triangle. So I just put I put a formula, you know, c1 squared plus c2, and I took the square root of that, and that was you know gave me my you know, my hypotenuse. Here again, that's the good old Pythagorean theorem. All right. Anybody have any questions they'd like to send through Amy right now? Just a reminder, wiggle your mouse at the bottom of the screen and send me a chat if anybody has any questions, but I don't see anybody popping up. I feel All like right. you're doing a great job, Marty. Well, thank you. I hope everybody it's making sense what I'm talking about to everybody. That's that's my entire purpose. Especially since it's our first time, you know, teaching in this format. Right. Um, you know, it, it takes a little while to get the hang of it. And this is kind of interesting because I've actually gone through most everything within lesson one. I expected this to take a class and a half and I'm done quicker than I normally am. I think it's because nobody's asking questions. So I, I encourage you to send Amy any questions that you may have. Maybe they're just a really smart group. I think so. I think that person that says they have expertise. I think that applies to everybody. And if I've been putting something out in you know, like a foreign language, I, ho I hope I haven't, but I certainly um, want, want everybody to understand where I'm at. So I'm going to go through and select on file and do another save as. I'll go to put up my documents. Remember, you're not sharing your screen now. Not saving my screen, but when I did save as, went to documents, the file mm -hmm. name comes up as lesson one part B dot XLSX. If I click in front of the L lesson, type in the word my, 
put a space in there and then go down and left click on save. Then I actually have saved that. I kept the original and then you actually see what you've done, you know, within the class. So I'm going to get out of here. All right. I want to come back to what we talked about originally. I want to talk about the concepts of a spreadsheet, the difference between a spreadsheet, which is a worksheet, and a workbook. The workbook is the entire file name. A workbook can contain one or more spreadsheets, and the spreadsheets do not have to be related. They can be something totally different from, say, sheet one to sheet two to sheet three. And we'll, later on, we're going to talk about how to create the sheets. I got into talking about how to start the program. The most straightforward way is, is to go to the left click on the start, you know, on the Windows button, and scroll down to Excel and left click on the Excel icon. You can also add a shortcut to your desktop or to your taskbar. And the beauty of these is that the icons will stay whether you put them on the taskbar or desktop or both. So the next time you want to open up Excel, it's, it's all you have to do is do a single click on the taskbar or a double click on the desktop. We talked about the components of a spreadsheet. Here again, we start talking about the various components. I'm looking at the top part of it as the Excel commands and the bottom part is primarily the worksheet. But you know that diagram with that, it's either Appendix A or Attachment A, I'm not sure which I called it, actually gives everything is labeled so that you can actually see all the pieces and parts. Um, with that, I also had Appendix B, boy, which is a common set of definitions. So we're kind of talking about Excel's language. And then that Appendix C, was basically a diagram showing what you can do with, key, with keyboard shortcuts. Some people are a lot more comfortable using the keyboard than they are with the mouse. Before we had the mouse, all we had was the keyboard back in the, uh, I call it the older days. But now, you know, now we have a mouse, so use whichever one's the most convenient. Talked about selecting cells. You can select an individual cells by just left clicking that cell. And if you're having a hard time finding it, you know, go, you know, slide down the column, whatever column it is, say column C, slide across to five, and you'll you'll see and then click in that cell, that intersection is cell C5. You can always tell where you're at within Excel by going up to that name box. It's right up there in the top of the commands by the formula bar. It'll anytime you're in a cell, it'll tell you what cell you're in. Excuse me, in. You can also select a group of cells by selecting one cell and then dragging your mouse as to the end of the group of cells you're interested in. That selects them all. You can select an individual column by going up into the column heading and you'll get the black arrow pointing down. You left click that, and you'll get select a column. If you want to select a different columns, you, you can select the first one and then hold down the control button and select individual ones. Or if you hold down the shift button, you can click, click a whole group of them. You click the first one and the last one, you can click all those columns. You do the exact same thing with rows. Just go to the row heading that you're interested in, select it. You can do the control and shift functions, you know, the same way. Also, if you want to select the entire worksheet, go up between cell A, A, A and row one. You'll see a little triangle. Click on that, you select the entire worksheet. Once you select cells, you know, you need to select a cell before you do any commands with them. So then we kind of go from there. I had you enter text, numbers, and formulas into cells. Start out with a very basic spreadsheet where I had you know, entered the text. I had you enter the you know, March, 
the values for the numbers. I just gave you those numbers. And we had we created formulas. We did simple addition, and this will get a little bit deeper later on with formulas, but I want to just show you how to add a few numbers together. There's four different methods. One method you you know, enter in the equal sign, type in the cell name that you're interested in, enter the plus, type in another cell name, plus, and then the, say a third one, cell name, and then press enter, and you're actually going to you know, have the sum of those three cells. The second way I talked about was to use the, you know, enter the you know, equal sign, click on a cell you're in, you know, interested in adding, click on cell C7, hit, type in the plus sign, click on cell C8, plus sign, and C9, and then press enter, and you're gonna have the sum between cell C7 and C9. We also, the third method I had in here is to go up and click on the FX button. That you know, gets into the formulas. I went into the sum formula and it looked at those and guessed which ones it was. Anytime you have Excel, try to you know, anticipate what you're trying to do. Always verify before you hit enter that you know, that's what you're getting. Then the fourth method, we went to the auto sum and clicked on it. And with auto sum, it in an also guessed which cells we were looking for. And you know, if they were correct, we just press enter. Four different ways. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Sometimes you want one or the other, but you may get used to using one of the four, and you may like it, you like it much better and use it most of the time. We looked at copying formulas from one cell to another. And what, what I, we did here, we selected a cell that had a, already had a formula in it. And then we went up to the clipboard, selected copy, and we went down to the cells that we want to copy that formula into, pressed paste, and then those cells were copied. I also showed you how to copy cells using the fill handle. Here again, you have a cell that has the formula in it. Go to that little bottom square, the bottom right-hand square on, in that cell. When you get that black cross, you just drag it down or drag it, you can drag it sideways too. So that'll actually copy formulas. Then we got into automatically entering sequences of numbers. This is using the fill handle. If you put two, two consecutive numbers in, you're going to get a list of numbers, you know, where, whatever the starting number is, and adds one to it all the way. If Excel, if you wanted to, you could, Excel could, you know, put in two different numbers, and it'll actually go through there and add the difference between the two. So that, and I had you save a spreadsheet. I wanted you to save the one that originally that Amy sent you, I wanted for you to um, save that as a different name. We started out with say lesson one, part A, and we saved that after we modified it to lesson one, or my lesson one, part A. So you actually have two files, two workbooks associated with lesson one, part A. So that way you can go back later and take a look at it. One of the things I don't know if everybody had an opportunity to read through lesson one, but if you haven't, feel free to go through there and you know, just read that before a class tomorrow. And this will give you fill in hopefully any blanks that you might have. I've tried to pattern the lecture basically for the lesson plan matches what I talk about. So I'm hoping I got pretty close on that. So that's pretty well what I have to, for today. I'm actually done a little bit early. You guys can get out of class early. And oh, don't leave yet. Don't oh, leave yet. <laughs> but, but, but Amy has something more for you. So I wanna, I wanna see what that is. Okay, I have a couple of things. One, I'm gonna throw it over to Charlie because he has a solution. 
for that little ribbon problem that I'm going to let him talk about first and then don't leave because I have a poll regarding our, our makeup day for losing yesterday. Actually, Amy, I think that <clears throat> that discussion about the ribbon thing, I think, is for us instructing the class. I don't think other people really, they really don't care probably about getting into the details of how Excel is set up. So we'll leave that uh, after we're done with the class. After class. Got it. I, I thought you meant like the end of class. So no worries. Right. All right. And now, I, as you know, we missed yesterday um, uh, through Zoom's fault, not our own. Just just pointing that out. No. <laughs> um, and we need to do something about making up that time because we don't want you to miss out on any of your lessons. So I have a poll here with some options and it is about, hold on, let me get to my, oops. so what should we do to make up that time? So we have a couple of options. Actually, we have three. We can do the session at the same time on Thursday. So we basically just push everything back a day. We can add time to tomorrow. Well, not today's because we're a little late on that, but um, we could add time to tomorrow's class and make up for it. Or we could just teach today and tomorrow and call it good. Um, so I, everybody, please uh, put your uh, two cents in. And by the way, if we just taught for two days, um, if we, we go ahead and teach that third day, it will be recorded and I will happily send you those recordings so you can just follow along um, while it plays. Um, we record all of our sessions and put them on our YouTube channel accessible via our website. So um, this is going to be interesting because the yeah. vote is kind of all over the place a little bit right now. So. Um, and whoever has the highest number wins. This is kind of one of those things. Um, I don't think it lets you vote more than once, but you know, you could try. <laughs> Rose is giggling. All right, so it looks like I'm gonna let it go about one more second. And here we go. We are gonna end our polling. So it looks like we are going to do Thursday at the same time. So those of you that didn't want to, just wanted to do two days or add some time, do not fear. I will send you the video of Thursday's session as well. So you will get all the instruction that you signed, that you really thought you were going to get at the beginning of this class um, and not miss a thing. And you can watch that at your leisure. All right. And, and folks, to the rest of you, um, I do have a solution so that you will actually be able to see that ribbon bar that Marty was working on. So I'll talk to them and show them how to set that up a little bit differently. But I think tomorrow when he does that, you will actually be able to see the formula that he's typing in. You'll be able to see those drop downs that are newer today. So I'll talk to these guys and show them what I figured out while you guys were learning about Excel. All right. Well, we had a comment about great content. So thank you, gentlemen, um, for that. And if no one has any more questions, then um, I think that we will be here same time, same place tomorrow morning. And we're just really hoping Zoom cooperates with us. I'm sure it will. And if not, you know, just stay tuned to your emails. I really appreciate you guys uh, replying to me so that I know that people were getting them and, and understanding what was happening because tech is always just a challenge. Um, but thank you for uh, helping us through our first session of this. We appreciate you guys and we will see you tomorrow.